beginning of the week, James Charles was dropped by Morphe in like a kind of very PR way, which makes mm. people think that he had like a contract or he has an investment in Morphe. That would make sense, I guess. It would at this point because he was so like, they were the only people that were doing his palette and all Mm. that kind of stuff. That makes sense. Um, So yeah, so they've said they're no longer going to stock his stuff. Um, Which is good because he is a predator and uh, can't, they took took them a very long time to drop him. Yeah, I feel like Morphe does tend to work with kind of problematic people makeup youtubers or maybe all well maybe just all makeup youtubers that have gotten big are kind of terrible yeah and because i know and if you guys know any please let us know but i know there must be really sweet lovely small makeup gurus out there yeah. um just doing the thing yeah uh, and there is a couple big ones that i like to be fair um but I do think there is a bit, because makeup is such a big thing on YouTube, mm. there must be a thing that you kind of have to be a bit mean to do well with it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, like, like you have to be, with it. Yeah, you have to be willing to social climb and yeah. like step Drop on people. people. Yeah, which is yeah. what most of them seem to do, to be fair. <laughs> um, so maybe like to be that successful doing makeup on YouTube, generally you're just a bit of an awful person. I think so. There's been too many now at this point that have yep. turned out to be a bit shit. So you think, mm, okay, well, there's there's a pattern developing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just feel like Morphe has tried every makeup YouTuber, and I feel like they've had mm-hmm. to drop so many at this point. <laughs> so maybe oh. we should just avoid YouTube now. They're just always <laughs> dropping them. Surely this does something for their sales if they're just always like so. picking people up, dropping them. Yeah. Well, if anyone knows any more, I don't actually know much about Morphe as an actual company. So if anyone knows the ins and outs of Morphe and how they work and why they specifically target YouTubers, because I don't, I had, I I mean, I'm not someone who's big into makeup, but I had not heard of Morphe before they started collaborating with YouTubers. Yeah, I heard of the brushes and then obviously with the more collaborations that they did, they were like everywhere. So I think it's definitely like a marketing thing. Um, there's a really good Smoky Glow video about the history of Morphe, so I would recommend people go and look at that if you're interested. Because oh, that's a um, nice little drop in there. Have you prepared <laughs> that, or is that just <laughs> off the cuff? That was just. See, she really has all the YouTube knowledge. <laughs> she can just <laughs> drop YouTube bombs whenever she needs to. Okay, well, okay. we're happy that he's been dropped. I guess yeah. so that we need repercussions. We do need repercussions because it's not great. Yeah. It's really not great. And we illegal. do not condone predatory behaviour and grooming, <laughs> if that was not obvious. Second item on the list. The reason that Jeff Wittick of the Vlog Squad uh-huh. has... Because when the whole thing with the Business Insider article, and he went okay. on the H3H3 podcast <laughs> and was just caught lying. and being He hadn't like, read it, had he? He hadn't read the article. <laughs> Which is great when you go to be interviewed about... Yeah, that you're yeah. like being like it's all lies, but oh, I don't yeah. need that bit. Oh, no, I only got to like the tagline. <laughs> sure, you. If I was being interviewed about like an article about me, I would have printed it off, read it in depth, highlighted. <laughs> it would be have tabs in involved. I would have yeah. notes at the <laughs> yeah. sides. I'd be like, this is false. This man had not read the article. <laughs> hadn't read the article, but he was very suspicious about his eye injury, and he wouldn't go into detail about his eye injury, okay. and that. He's now, I don't know if he's made a document. Yeah, I think it's he's made a documentary about it and released the footage of that time. But the reason he got it was because David Dobrik decided that uh, it would be a fun extreme prank to have, you know, those like crane excavator things that they have where it's like digging up massive amounts of dirt. I used to be scared as a child that one of them would pick me up. I mean, it's it's a scary piece of shit. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely terrifying. He decided that... They would drive it out to a lake. None of them had like a stunt coordinator or anything. And they had a piece of string that they tied around the head of the excavator. And he was swinging his friends around the lake on this piece of string. Jeff flies off and hits his eye. And now he has brain damage and he's lost sight in his eye. So he could like sue David Dobrik. Well, David Dobrik's paying for the medical care. To stop him from suing him. (laughs) 
I imagine. Can you imagine? I that? think there's still a claim there, even if someone pays for your medical expenses. I think David Dobrik's like, well, that's dealt with now. Yeah, mm, I think it's off. still brain damage. Something. Yeah, that's like a long term um, problem. That's a life changing. Which reason, means, yeah, which means I think you could still claim even if he pays for your medical insurance. He agreed to do it. He's also stupid. So like. I don't know how. There's much... two sides. Also, it does kind of remind me that Jake Paul or one of the Paul brothers, kind of, they blend into one to me, they had do. a lockdown party. One of them, I think he had a lot, and <laughs> one of them, I swear, had like a crane thing in the garden that was picking people up and like swinging them round as a fun game. Oh my god! <laughs> and I, feel free to correct me on that if anyone knows if I'm wrong or if I'm missing some of the details. But I do genuinely think that was a thing that happened. I mean, the fact that they were having a party during a pandemic and this was like, uh, like I feel Early summertime. Talks. Yeah. Um, and then do that it does make me think this behavior is definitely maybe not abnormal for. Mm-hmm. And they're just not smart, are they? Yeah it's so not smart and he is literally like a 14 year old boy that's what it feels like he's just like has a he's getting all his he's like the conductor of it which is just weird as well that he can manipulate all these people to do this because he's like their cash it's so so weird i hate it anyway he needed someone in his life to tell like was tell him no (laughs) and that's why like is it jason nash who was an actual adult there like i know they were all adults but like was an old man compared to them (laughs) could like why did he never say like oh no this is probably inappropriate he seems like the worst guy to me oh i think he would be he's dodgy like he was hanging out with like children and is doing so recently gabby hannah yeah this is the one we've both got it it, it had to be mentioned it had to be i i don't think she's mentally well and that's not me yeah. being like pop no. psychologist of it this is not the actions of someone who's mentally like the like, screaming of the videos like this oof. is why i kind of want us to like i don't want us to just sit here and talk about her i think we've kind of like decided this in the past that like she gets enough hate already like yeah. a lot like people in her comments and stuff like that they're not they're just hating the way which you know there is valid reason for some of it but do remember it's always a person at the end of it so valid criticism yes don't say like mean really really horrible things however so i don't want us to just be like ha 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 this no but we are going to obviously give her valid criticism for doing the wrong thing yeah doing what she does but at the end of the day yeah i think the thing that we want to say is she does seem like she needs some help at the minute Mm -hmm. so we're not going to sit here and be like ha 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 but we are going to like mention it we have to it's everywhere and she is trolling possibly uh she's decided to lash out against rachel oates about the criticism but this was like months ago i don't know why she's well, bringing it up now it seems very trisha paytas to me like yeah. it seems like older trisha paytas behavior so i don't know if she's like observed that and seen like that because trisha's doing very well now um and trisha paytas's career has kind of gone on the up whereas gabby hannah's yes. has continued to go on the down so i don't know if you've seen that and decided to move on to a trisha route um mm. but it's the thing she was saying about rachel who did like Rachel's videos were valid criticism of poetry. Yeah. It wasn't really like it wasn't criticism an of on her. No, it was just the poetry, and you know you can just not watch the videos. Yeah. Um, she sent her the book. She sent her the book because the first one that Rachel Oates did was so kind of nuanced. She she gave it much more credit than I think yeah. it deserved. Uh-huh. She gave it a balanced response, I think, and she mm-hmm. still her overall thing was that it was badly written and you know quickly rushed through. That sparked a whole load of critiques of Gabby's poetry and other poetry books, which, you know, it's the internet. If someone sees, if that's an interesting topic, then you're going to talk about it as well. You've got to expect that with the things that you put out there. She sent her her second poetry book called Dandelion to Rachel Oates. She reviewed it and she was like, this is also bad. And Gabby Hanna's turned around and being like, you're bullying me when I've put out this beautiful thing into the world and you're bullying me because I'm neurodivergent. It's like, well, the thing is, like, I, maybe we see it differently because if anyone doesn't know, me and Holly 
did an English literature degree, so we're kind of used to like criticizing people's work, it's, <laughs> like normal to us, but I guess, at course. this point. Yeah. And I would say that poetry is one of the most criticized bits of like literature Absolutely. you can do because it's yeah. so subjective. Like, mm-hmm. I have read bits of poetry by very famous poets that people love, and I've just thought, I don't like it. Yeah. And that's yeah. okay. Like, I cannot like that. If Gabby thinks that her poetry is good, then it's good. Like, it's good to her. If some and people, people read it and enjoy it, it, yeah, then that's good. Exactly. That's good enough. Like, that's okay. And to be honest, all press is good press. Yeah. Rachel hating on it probably gave it more press. And, like, probably then more people bought it. Even if they to were buying it. it just to, like, hate on it, Yeah, they bought it. You've got sales. So at the end of the day, if she likes it and she thinks it's good poetry, and even if she has five people who read it and go, this is really good poetry, I really resonate with this, Mm-hmm. That makes it good poetry to her, but people are still allowed to say, this is not for me. I don't yeah. like it. I think this is bad. That's just how art works. Art yeah. is subjective. You put it out she into the has, world. She said this herself in the past. <laughs> but the stuff she was saying about Rachel was just mean. And mm. she called her a loser. She said that no one cares about her unless she's talking about Gabby. Mm. Um and then all these tweets that she was writing about Rachel, she then posted them on her Instagram story and tagged Rachel in them because Rachel does not have Twitter anymore. So she tagged, she made sure to go on a platform that Rachel had so that she could see them. Mm. And Rachel was basically like, just stop. I don't want to be a part of this. Mm. Um, and she said, it's been months since I reviewed any of your work. Just accept the constructive criticism and write better. Um, but then Gabby wrote, like, fired back and said that Rachel was narcissistic and abusive. Which is just not. Like, it's it's just not. But it, every mm. criticism she sees, I think she's so desperate to be liked and so, so desperate for, yeah. for everybody to read her work the way that she reads it. Yeah. But people aren't, not everyone's going to like you or your work. That's just part of the world. And you're like 33 and you should know this by now. And, but if you've got mental health issues, then obviously that's going to flare it up. Yeah. And this is the response of somebody who's probably not very mentally well. She's done this before on the internet. Mm -hmm. She's had this kind of reaction and you just think, oh, I I want you to get help. I don't want you to be doing this. You know, people are trying to be compassionate towards you, but when you're turning around and being so horrible and mean, it's like, why did you need to do that? Why, yeah. why are you using I mean, your platform when, to do this? I don't see a time that we're going to suddenly become fans of Gabby Hanna. Oh, I'm never going to like her. No, oh, I mean, fine. after everything she's done, and that's not just regarding the poetry. I mean, she yeah. defended a, or like rapist. went back to being friends with a rapist who had raped her friend, let's yeah. remember. So like, at the end of the day, I'm never going to be able to put that aside and go and be a fan of hers. But I'm... Yeah. Um, also not going to be someone who doesn't recognize that it does seem like she needs help at this point mm-hmm. in time yeah but i'm not gonna say that doesn't mean i'm gonna be like yeah i'll forgive everything she's saying because she's kind of doing a thing which she's done before which is kind of encouraging her fans to go and hate on someone else mm. um yeah even if we might think there's not many yaoi Hanna fans left there's i mean what will she she probably has like over a million subscribers, right? I think so. Yeah, it's and a like large even if they're people, not still. active subscribers and they don't like her anymore and they just don't realise they're subscribed to her, let's say a hundred thousand of them are like dedicated fans. That's all a lot of them of are people. reading what she's saying and yeah. reading that Rachel Oates is a bully and all of this. They're mm. gonna then go and hate on Rachel, mm-hmm. who is just giving constructive criticism. So it's a difficult one, but it's not. It's not good. <laughs> no. <laughs> and it's just sad to see that she's doing yeah. the same thing. Because, I mean, we did an episode on YouTube. It was way yeah. back at the beginning. It was like our third episode or so something. So long ago and now. I, <laughs> I know. And I talked about Gabby Hanna because she was kicking up a fuss then. Yeah. It's like yearly, a yearly cycle. No, I don't know that I've ever seen her do it in this way, though. Like, this seemed no, different this to me. Different. I, like, in, in the past... I feel like you could kind of understand the mindset she was coming from. Like, it wasn't, mm-hmm. it never made fully, full sense, but you could be like, okay, well, I get it. Like, for example, with the her drama with Trisha Paytas, with the mm-hmm. wanting to tell her friend that he might have been dating someone with an STD, even though it wasn't her place to do so, 
you could kind of see why someone would do that. I don't know, yeah. like it was dealt with in such a bad way, but you could kind of see the logic. But this one, when I looked at it, I was just like, no, this seems like this doesn't seem like someone who's in the right headspace. Like this no. seems like not good. Uh, this one I only saw this morning. Okay. Uh, Zac Efron has a new face. So I had seen this too. And I feel because we don't know the whole story, it's like, I don't want to be too harsh. <laughs> but his face is different. Yeah. Let's they, say that. I think plastic surgeons are saying that he's probably had fillers in his jaw to change the shape yeah. of his jaw and possibly with his like lips His lips, as well. I definitely feel like he's had lip fillers. And his jaw yeah. too. And maybe, like, a lot of comments I've seen are saying that he's, uh, like, a really self-conscious person or something like that. Mm-hmm. So... I feel kind of sad, but then yeah. I've seen others about... I remember this being re- reported that he'd broken his jaw at one point, so I don't oh. know, maybe it's when like he broke his... Well, yeah. I don't know, maybe when he broke it, I don't think it was made, like, when it's set, it was maybe not the same jaw that he'd had before, and now right. maybe he's, like, trying to make it better. I don't know, maybe he's insecure about it, but it was a surprise. It was a surprise. Like, and I don't know, I just didn't expect his face to look like that. And, I mean, obviously... It's his face. If he's happy, he's happy. Yeah. But I, the sad news was that he broke up with his, like, normal girlfriend who was a waitress. They'd been together for 10 months. He was going to move to Australia with her because she was, like, they were having a great time in quarantine and they've broken up. So that's actually the sad part yeah. of the story. Right. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, whatever his face is like, Zach Efron seems to be a genuinely nice person. I think he is. Yeah. And yeah. so... I don't know, he came up to me and he was like, Hannah, you're the one for me. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> this is my life now. <laughs> this is my life. I don't even know that Like, I really find him attractive at this point in time. Well, I don't really think I do, but that's nothing to do with him. I just, I can only really dedicate myself to a certain amount of celebrity men at once, you know? Like, there's only so many I can deal with. <laughs> And so many of them are problematic. Like, I have to limit myself because I don't want to be disappointed. And so it's, it's the way we've got to live. <laughs> all I can hear in my head is the, um, I hate all men when he sees me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's maybe me with Zac Efron now. I just feel like he would treat me right. I mean, the fact he was willing to move to Australia. They spent, like, ten months in quarantine is, I think, like, five years. Of, yeah, in, like, right? That's dedication. Ten months is a long time to spend with someone that you've just met. So they must have been really happy. But now that it's amicable. Yeah. And she looks so nice. She's lovely. Mm, sad. I. Okay. <laughs> what, yeah, same. I hope everyone's okay. I just hope he's okay. But I will say his face was a surprise. It was a surprise. Yeah, it was, it was a, a shock. Surprise. Um, have you seen this stuff on TikTok about this band Tramp Stamps? I have seen the Tramp Stamp slander. I it's insane. I love the slander. Um, yeah, like I say, if people want to hear more about it, we are happy to go into it because I think it would oh, yeah. be interesting. Because the rumor is they are industry plants, mm-hmm. um, but also they seem to just be kind of terrible. <laughs> uh, their music's not good. I actually listened to the song in full to make sure I could give a valid criticism of it, and it's not good. It's not. <laughs> There's weird amounts of auto tune in it. Really? Like, you know when people do eh, like <laughs> they just add robotic voice and I don't know the like actual name of it, of it but like they're not adding it to, eh, they're not adding it to make their voice better, they're adding it to sound like a robot maybe. Okay. It's kind of like that. I'm explaining that very badly. And then a lot of the song is just them listing men's names. Well, like famous men. And Michael and something and Bob and meh. And they do that for a long time. They're just naming the names of straight white guys, if you don't know that's the name of the song. Um, and then that's... everyone's like, they <laughs> are two, I think two of three of them are just straight white girls. So I think a lot of people are like, it seems a bit hypocritical. Yeah. The song's about how they're never going to sleep with another straight white guy. Yeah. I mean, one of them's married to a straight white guy. So... <laughs> It's a bit offensive to him. <laughs> yeah, it's like, this is how I'm telling you that it's over. <laughs> it does feel like they are industry plans and the marketing team behind it has been like, women love to hate on men, um, girl boss queens. And <laughs> yeah, I don't know their that. actual names. All I keep hearing is gatekeep. 
gaslight. Go boss. <laughs> Love it. Love that phrase. <laughs>